the former Morrison government is once again facing accusations of pork barrelling while in power and dudding regional Australians in the process after a scathing review of its handling of the billion dollar taxpayer fund. The Auditor General has handed down a report into the management of the Building Better Regions Fund, finding departmental advice on projects most worthy of support were routinely ignored by ministers. In fact, seats held by the Nationals appear to be the biggest beneficiaries, receiving 29% more money than if funding decisions had been made on merit. Liberal held seats received twice as many grants as Labor electorates. Lots to get through here. Let's bring in the new Infrastructure Minister, Catherine King. Minister, good morning to you. Good morning. What's your reading on this report? Well, surprised but not surprised, I guess. It's uh, part of the pattern we saw in the last decade with the, um, uh, the Liberal National Party government and this latest audit report into what was, in essence, five rounds of a billion-dollar regional program shows, you know, 65% of all of the big projects, the infrastructure stream projects were actually, uh, which makes up you know 98% of the program, were ones not assessed by from, by the department as having the most merit. Um, there were some weird things happening as well. I think we saw, particularly in the last round, basically the it looks like the ministers said don't don't give us any recommendations, just let us choose from a pool of funding. So they just got all of the projects. Uh, the other weird thing that they seem to have done is deliberately introduce this thing called other matters. So there's the four main criteria that everyone put their applications in under and then they said there was this other thing you could assess grants under which were other matters and in some weird sort of Kafka play, one of the factors that were counted as other matters were other matters. So basically they could choose anything and that's what they did and uh, not surprisingly, particularly in a couple of the rounds, we see that it's really benefited uh, the National Party seats, uh, sometimes at the de de uh, detriment of Liberal Party seats, but uh, certainly at the de detriment of seats that are held by the Labor Party. And frankly, as a regional MP, uh, you know, I know community members here have been putting in grants into this Building Better Regions Fund, and to sort of hear this is just really disheartening. It's, you know, it's, you think in communities under Labor, I think many, many council areas in uh, under the last government, we just thought, why would you even bother putting into this program? So it's pretty disappointing to read. Uh, but we've got a big mess to clean up and I think the previous government has a lot to answer in relation to this. I guess taking uh, politics, Liberal, National Labor seats out of this, Catherine King, I, I guess the real losers, wherever they were in Australia, are in Australia, are the sporting clubs who desperately needed facilities, uh, regional communities rather, who desperately needed facilities, were judged to deserve those facilities on merit by the Infrastructure Department and as, as a result of this process, missed out. Yeah, absolutely. I think so many people put in an enormous effort on these programs. They take a lot to put in applications like this. Uh, we'll never know. I don't see the list of what those those most meritorious ones were because that's obviously advice to the previous government. Uh, but certainly there will be uh, clubs today, you know, community cultural facilities that are basically saying, well, maybe we were one of the ones that was more meritorious than uh, what got funded in the National Party seats. And, you know, frankly, I think this sort of behaviour in terms of grants programs. I think Australians' tolerance for it is really, you know, it, it, it is just gone. Uh, and I think that, you know, we, I, I've got a big mess to clean up when it comes to this. And it particularly, uh, we need to try and get better, trans but more transparent processes in place so that regional communities across the country can benefit no matter who they vote for. OK, there has been some pushback from within the National Party. In fact, Fiona Nash, who's a former deputy leader, says the Infrastructure Department, the bureaucrats who occupy the uh, Infrastructure Department seats uh, live in the cities, live in Canberra. They don't, in her view, have an on-the-ground understanding of the needs of regional communities. What do you say to that line of defence? Well, I think uh, the first thing I'd say is, in fact, actually, Fiona Nash presided over round one, and that was really, according to the audit office, probably the best round. So she actually did a really good job, it looks like. But basically, it all went downhill from there once um, <laughs> once we had some of our other, other colleagues get hold of it. And by the end of round five, when uh, uh, then Minister Joyce was in charge of it, uh, it was basically, you know, choose your own adventure. It was just, you know, you can choose anything out of, out of it. There's a pool they made, didn't ask for any recommendations from the department at all. So so it really went downhill. So Fiona actually did a really good job. And I think it sounds like, you know, from the processes she used, it in fact was quite balanced. And of course, there is absolutely a place for uh, MPs, regional MPs, to be able to 
argue the case as to why they think a grant is important in their area. At the end of the day, this is really about transparency. Ministers have to say, you know, people who are applying for grants need to know exactly what the guideline, having a, a guideline that says, oh, we'll, we'll consider other factors, and one of those factors might be other factors, is just plain weird to me. Uh, but so that, that really is the most important thing. People need to know what they're applying for, and ministers need to be transparent about the basis on which they're making decisions. Uh, just before you go, Catherine King, one of the truisms of Australian politics is to never stand between a politician and a pot of money. Can you, can you give a rock-solid guarantee that you, any of your colleagues, will not do anything like this during your term of government? And if you do you, and, found, and are found out, you'll immediately resign? Well, the first thing I'd say is that, as I said, I think the Australians have got zero tolerance for this. I'm in the process of trying to redesign the regional grants programs at the moment, and I'll make some announcements uh, about that. You know, obviously, we've got election commitments that we need to account for and be transparent, but I think Australians' tolerance for this is really zero. We've got, uh, and, and certainly, uh, I'm determined to make sure we have clearer, fairer, transparent processes uh, right the way across the regional grants programs that I administer. Catherine King, appreciate your time this morning. Thank you. Really good to be with you.